Hey everyone, welcome back to Garnet Reviews. Today we're checking out a boat that I wouldn't be surprised if most of you'd never heard of before, let alone seen before. This is a 2001 Pacific Seacraft 38T fast trawler. This is an American built trawler yacht and there's only believed to be 11 of these ever created. Which is a real shame because this is a stunning trawler yacht, in my opinion there should be a million of these. But you have now got exclusivity if you wanted to go and do the Great Loop or any of the different marinas and anchorages you stop at. And it's going to be a great icebreaker for sure. At the time of shooting this video, this one was up for sale with Mark Ziegler Yacht Sales for $285,000 and she was lying in Jacksonville, Florida. I love the appearance on this one, is there enough woodwork to give it that accent touch without being high maintenance? There's plenty of handrails and guardrails to grab onto, but at the same time it's not intrusive. And there's easy boarding access on both the port and starboard side. I love that overhang overhead, it gives you plenty of shade and protection, especially with the side entry doors being here. You get nice clear deck space getting up to the bow. On the bow you'll see we've got the large fender baskets for storing them out of harm's way while the boat's in use. And we've got an electric windlass, and notice this actually has a winch built into it as well, which will be a real help if you're going through lock gates. The port hatch has got a deck wash in here, for rinsing off the deck, but also the anchor and chain. And the starboard hatch is a great way of storing any ropes for the bow as well. And as I pan round, you'll see that timeless classic design. I think this boat looks great today, but I think in another 20 years she'll still look just as impressive. And there's plenty of canopies in place to keep that fly bridge enclosed for up top cruising. And as we make our way down the starboard side, you'll see that there is a door right at the lower helm. And then as mentioned, there's also boarding access on this side, making it easy to get on board regardless of what side the pontoon's at. And at the stern, the main feature here is there's a 10 foot 2 inch high field tender. This was a 2019 rib with a 9.9 .9 horse Mariner outboard. She's hanging on davits, which is a great way of carrying a boat, and that way you don't need to worry about towing it behind or taking up space on the deck. We've got a hot and cold shower on the transom, rinse off after you come back in from the bathing platform. And then we've got a small lazarette bag here, and then here you'll find we've got a spare anchor, we've got more ropes, more hoses, accessories for that tender, and it's all stored safe and secure and neatly out the way. In a port quarter, this is where you're going to find a little grill that's mounted up here. Imagine grilling out some fish that you caught. You see that rod holder down here as well. Can't get any fresher than that. And this one's been designed for cruising up in the flybridge, and I love how easy it is to get in the flybridge. The steps are deep enough that it doesn't feel like your feet are going to fall or lose grip. Plenty of handholds in place. And for my great loop friends, Although this one does have a relatively tall mast, this mast is on hinges, so it's very easy to lower down, and you can lower that canopy and clear any bridge that you have to worry about. There's easily seating up here for eight adults. I'm going to say you can get at least three adults on either side, and then obviously you've got your two seats up front. Underneath the seats at the side, there's plenty of storage. I was impressed with the helm seats. They're extremely comfortable, and it's really thick padding that's on these ones. You could sit here for hours on end without issues. I also like the fact that despite that canopy over top, the instruments are normally covered up and you can see there's also the blue canopy in front as well, so everything's well protected. So on starboard next to the helm we've got a VHF radio. You then see we've got a full bank of engine instrumentation, there's controls here for the windlass and also the trim tabs. We've got a Simrad multifunction display, this has got GPS, chart plotter, radar and all those sonar. There's a Raytheon autopilot and then there's a second VHF radio as well. And as for the canopy, I like the fact that you can roll these up in sections, but also you can obviously remove this completely if you wanted to. And compared to some boats I've been on, it's got quite a solid framework as well. And then another feature of the Flyer Bridge Light is there's a cockpit table in the middle, but this has got leafs that you can open and close, so whenever you want to keep it, it is easy access to the Flyer Bridge, you keep it closed up. But it's actually quite a large cockpit table when you expand it out. And there's a number of solar panels on this one. There's a total of 300 watts of solar panels with a 20 amp Victron solar charge controller that was installed earlier this year. And then as we make our way inside, first impressions are always key. I love the woodwork that's in this one. I love how much space there is, how much headroom there is, and how much natural light there is. As with the flybridge, the saloon's spacious enough that you can have your family and friends on board with you. 
You got the galley on the starboard side. There's a three burner propane stove with an oven underneath it. The gas tank's up on the flybridge. You've got quite a deep double stainless steel sink. There's a good amount of counter space. And this countertop is Corian and it's a savannah magma colour. We've got a number of storage drawers and cabinets. And I like the fact that they all have this push button lock effect. That way you don't need to worry about anything opening while the boat's underway, especially if you ever hit heavy weather. And throughout the yacht you'll see a number of these doors have got that ventilated louver effect and that way everything just avoids that damp mouldy smell you sometimes get on boats. For extended crews and I like the fact that there's both a fridge and freezer installed. There's more storage overhead which currently has a TV, DVD player, things like that that you can bring forward or relocate on board as needed. And then we also have a microwave convection oven and more storage again on the starboard bulkhead. And as with the flybridge, this one's got a clever cockpit table installed. It's pretty small and compact when it's not in use, but it does have the leaf that you can open out, and it reaches both sides of the saloon. And there's our storage throughout this yacht. There's even storage underneath here, which is where they're keeping things that's essential, like close at hand, band-aids, flashlights, things like that. And then we've also got a large cooler on board, and that's a fusion stereo system that's above with speakers throughout. And I was impressed with the lower helm. This one has got easy deck access. You've got full engine instrumentation. You see this one's got a bow thruster fitted. you get trim tabs and also controls for the windlass. you get a Simrad multifunction display. you get the Raytheon autopilot. And you've also got the VHF radio overhead. On the bows, where you're going to find the guest cabin. And I was really impressed with the size of the V berth that's here. You can see we've got the infill cushion, but look at how thick the mattress is. This is an extremely comfortable guest cabin. There's storage underneath this bed, but there's also easy access to service or repair the bow thruster. This cabin is en suite, and the faucet that you see here, this is actually retractable and becomes a shower head, so you get a toilet and shower, as well as plenty of storage for your toiletries and personal belongings. And then as well as the storage underneath the bed, we also do have locker space on the starboard side. Which just makes great use of space, especially for a boat of this size. And speaking of size, she's got a length overall of 38 feet 5 inches. She's got a beam of just over 13 feet. And she's got a maximum draft of 3.9 feet. As we head aft, notice on the deck of the saloon, this is all where the engines are located. And almost all of this is removable, so it's easy access. But I love the owner's aft cabin. This has got an island bed that's clearly accessible from either side. There's a ton of natural light, great headroom, but you also have access to the aft deck if you wanted. And this stateroom is en suite, but unlike the forward head, this one does have a separate toilet and shower compartment. I should point out there's 190 gallons of fresh water, there's 39 gallon holding tank. There's also 320 gallons of fuel on board. There's a ton of storage in here, so you could ideally be used for extended cruising. But if you lift these steps, this is an easy access entryway into the engine room. And then here you're going to find a pair of Caterpillar 3126B diesel engines. These are approximately 350 horsepower each, and she's got just under 2200 hours on the clock. This is a fast trawler. She's designed to cruise somewhere around 12-13 knots, and full throttle she'll hit around 17 knots in the right condition. We also have a 7.6 kilowatt diesel generator down here. All the batteries were replaced last year. All the Fireboy automatic engine room fire suppression system, that was all recertified in 2022. There's engine room blowers that connect to the side decks. And it's a very clean and very dry engine room. I never saw any signs of leaks, drips or anything like that while I was on board. I'd like to thank Mark for allowing me the opportunity to come on board, check this one out, especially with being such a rare boat. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments, if you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.